Hi everybody, welcome to Dr. Manny's YouTube Balloon Shops. This is part three for temporary cardiac pacing. As I've indicated previously, this balloon shop is for nurses and healthcare providers who look after, or may be required to look after, patients with a temporary cardiac pacemaker. What we're going to review in this session are pacing terms, pacing thresholds, sensing thresholds, and any concerns that are associated with pacing and sensing thresholds. Let's review our knowledge again, just to reinforce. The intrinsic cardiac rhythm refers to which of the following statements? A, B, C, or D? The correct answer is the patient's own heart rhythm. Question two, which of the following statements explains the relative refractory period? A, the vulnerable period. B, is in the T wave. C, is partial ventricular repolarization. Or D, all of the above. The correct answer is all of the above. Three, which of the following will relate to the, the R and T phenomenon? A, B, C or D? The correct answer is they all can relate to the RNT phenomenon. Which of the following best describes the millivolt? Is it the unit which measures the amplitude on the ECG? Is it B, the unit of current used to quantify the pacemaker output? Is it C, the unit of measurement that quantifies the pacemaker rate or none of the above? Well, it's A unit which measures the amplitude on the ECG. Which of the following best explains demand mode pacing? Pacing will only occur if the heart rate falls below the set pacemaker rate, A. The nurse demands that the patient must be paced, B. The patient demands the doctor pace them, C, or none of the above, D. The correct answer is A. Pacing will only occur if the heart rate falls below the set pacemaker rate. Question seven, AV sequential pacing is best explained by which of the following? A. B, C, or D? The correct answer is all of the above. Which of the following statements is true? Electrical capture is the same as depolarization? A. One to one capture is when the pacemaker spike is followed by a P wave or a QRS complex or both? C, B. Electrical capture does not guarantee cardiac output C or all the above are true, D. It's D, all the above are true. Which of the following is the intrinsic cardiac pacemaker? A, the SA node, B, the AV node, C, the bundle of Hiss, or D, the Purkinje fibers? The correct answer is the SA node. Which of the following does the P wave represent? Well, that's A, atrial depolarization. Can you name this pacemaker mode by the rhythm? This is atrial pacing, which could be AOO or AAI. What about this one? This is ventricular pacing, which could be VOO or VVI. What about this one? This is AV sequential pacing, atrial ventricular pacing. And it could be a number of different modes. But the atria and the ventricles are both being paced. These are some pacemaker terms that we should be familiar with. Capture. 
Capture is when the pacemaker depolarizes the myocardium with an electrical stimulus current from the battery. And this can be capture of the atria, the ventricles, or both, which means there's a response. The myocardium responds to the electrical stimulation. There we see the ventricle is being stimulated by the pacemaker spike, which represents the pacemaker electrical current or activity. Sensing is when the pacemaker stops pacing after it sees an inherent myopotential, which can be atria, ventricles, or both. It identifies that it doesn't need to help the heart at this point in time. This is demand mode pacing. And when it recognises that it sees an inherent myopotential, which is demonstrated by the ECG, the PQRST complex, it stops pacing. What about obtaining capture? This is the stimulation threshold. And the stimulation threshold basically means how much electricity or current from the pacemaker is required to make the myocardium respond to the pacemaker. So for example here, I put there, you've got the inherent rhythm, one milliamp, that's the current, not enough. Two milliamps, still not enough. At three milliamps, the pacemaker captures the ventricle, and as a consequence of that, you get pacemaker rhythm. Typically, the capture threshold at three milliamps, if that's what it is, will be doubled. If it was one, for example, it would be two. You'd increase it to two. If it was two at capture, you increase it to four. If you get three, like we have in this diagram here, you increase it to six as a safety feature, just in case something changes and you get failure to capture. So, for the stimulation threshold, you increase the output in milliamps till you get one-to-one -one capture. And as I said, for example, you've got your three milliamps there, that's the stimulation threshold, or where you get capture, and then you double the output for safety, which we've done to six milliamps. Determining the stimulation threshold, this is how you do it step by step. So have a look at the rhythm. You've got a bradycardia. The rate is approximately 30 beats per minute, and this looks like an idioventricular rhythm. And this possibly could have occurred because of a medication refractory problem. Or for example here, someone may have taken a medication too much and they're not responding to things like atropine or epinephrine or other sympathomimetics. Step one, you set the pacemaker rate higher than the intrinsic rate. So if their rate was 30 beats per minute, you could set it at 40. But typically you set it at something that is normal, which again would be about 70, 75 pulsations per minute. And as you can see there, that's the rate dial at the top. You set it at 70, for example, or 80, or something normal-ish. Once you've got control of the heart, because you've got capture, you decrease the output towards 0.1 milliamps. And as you decrease it, have a look, you've got pacemaker rhythm in the strip there, where you lose capture, this is called loss of capture. But again, don't leave it for too long because the patient in this rhythm strip here is an asystole. Step three, you then increase the output, not quickly, but you increase the output in milliamps till capture is restored. Where you get capture being restored, this is the stimulation threshold. Now, typically, the stimulation threshold in epicardial pacing and transvenous pacing, you'll get captured at around about 0.5 to about 2 milliamps. In transcutaneous pacing, because it's outside the body and the skin increases what is called transthoracic resistance, which means it stops electricity getting into the heart, you need higher outputs. And typically, in transcutaneous pacing, you need 
50 to 100 milliamps in order to achieve capture or the stimulation threshold. Stimulation threshold considerations that you should think about are when things don't go according to plan. So high stimulation thresholds of more than 0.2 milliamps typically occur because of poor electrode placement, tachyphylaxis, which means the heart's got used to it. So therefore it requires higher and higher doses of stimulation. Or you've got tissue fibrosis or poor circulation where the electrode's placed. Hypoxemia, acid base and electrolyte issues can be an issue. Hyperglycemia. And certain medications decrease sensitivity as well. Antiarrhythmics such as amiodarone. Then you've got low stimulation thresholds, less than two milliamps. That basically means, well, your electrode placement's good. You must have improved the circulation, oxygenation. You must have improved the placement of the electrode. And acid base and electrolyte corrections have been made and certain medications such as sympathomimetics, such as epinephrine, could increase blood supply, transmission of the current, and provide low stimulation thresholds. The next step then is determining the sensing threshold. And this is a step-by-step -step process as well, which is a little bit more complex. However, this can only really be done if the patient is hemodynamically stable, which means they've got to have an inherent heart rate that provides a normal blood pressure, which is reflected by a normal cardiac output. So typically, the sensing threshold levels in the atria are reasonably low, one to three millivolts, and in the ventricles, they're about three to five millivolts, which is a little bit higher. But let me say again, to do the sensing threshold, you can estimate it without doing this step here, which typically is done. However, if you really want to find out what the sensing threshold is, it can only be done if the patient is hemodynamically stable, as you'll see. So step one is to set the pacing rate lower than the patient's intrinsic heart rate. And typically this is done um, 10 pulsations lower. For example, if the patient's heart rate was 75 pulsations per minute, you would set it lower by 10, let's say at 60 pulsations per minute. Then you decrease the output till capture is lost. And this is called loss of capture. We did this before. And you observe the green pacing light on the pulse generator there, and it will continue to flash even on 0.1 of a milliamp. However, you won't be able to get stimulation because the stimulation threshold, for example, would be much higher than that. So again, let me point out, the patient has to be hemodynamically stable with their intrinsic heart rate. And as you can see in the rhythm strip now, you've still got a pacemaker spike, but it's not causing any problems because it is now at 0 0.1 of a milliamp and you can't get capture. However, you can see the inherent heart rhythm, which is approximately, let's say 40 beats per minute. And yeah, gee, the blood pressure seems to be okay. And you said to the patient, are you okay? And he says, yes, I seem to be okay. So therefore I must be hemodynamically stable. In step three, you decrease the sensitivity the third dial, and you turn the dial all the way around to asynchronous past the 20 millivolts. And this now causes fixed mode pacing and no sensing. And this allows the pacemaker to pace continually. However, you're not concerned about the asynchronous pacing because the patient is in their inherent rhythm. The green pacing light will still come on flashing because again, it has been set to 0 0.1 of a milliamp which is too low to provoke capture of the myocardium. However, pacing will continue. Then you increase the sensitivity by turning the dial, the sensitivity dial, to 0 0.5 of a millivolt. And this will cause demand mode pacing to occur 
and sensing to be activated. When the sensing begins, the pacemaker will stop pacing, green light turns off. And as soon as sensing commences, the yellow light comes on. Step five, this is the point at which the yellow sensing light came on and the green pacing line turned off. This is the sensing threshold. And as I said, typical sensing thresholds are in the atria, one to three millivolts, and in the ventricles, three to five millivolts. In the rhythm strip you can see there, you can see here that you've got the pacemaker, pacing, and then you've got the inherent beat pacemaker inherent beat so basically the pacemaker is saying oh yeah they've dropped below a specific rate I have to pace but then it picks up and then I don't have to pace then it drops and it does have to pace then it increases and doesn't have to pace this is demand mode pacing with the pacemaker sensing the inherent activity as being good stops pacing as being bad starts pacing. In step six, the sensing threshold value is typically decreased by 50% for safety to reduce the risk of oversensing. Remember, the pacemaker is just a machine and it depends on you to set it correctly. You don't want oversensing to occur. For example, if the sensing threshold was two millivolts then it would be decreased to four millivolts. Look, the figure is increased, but you're actually decreasing sensitivity. The two millivolts is now more sensitive than the four millivolts. The two millivolts sensitivity has been increased or decreased actually to four millivolts, which is less sensitive in order to prevent as you'll see shortly, oversensing to occur. Now remember, the greater the sensitivity, the lower the number on the dial. 20 millivolts is the least sensitive setting. If you click it into the asynchronous mode with this pacemaker, there's no sensing. 0 0.5 millivolts is the most sensitive setting. So the figure 0.5 isn't the least, it's the most sensitive. The 20 millivolts isn't the most sensitive, it is the least sensitive. So sensing threshold considerations are, if you've got high sensing thresholds, poor electrode placement, tissue fibrosis or poor circulation to the myocardium, hypoxemia, acid base and electrolyte issues, hypoglycemia, or again, certain medications that are antiarrhythmics such as amiodarone. Low sensing threshold basically means things have improved. Good electrode placement, improved oxygenation and circulation, acid base and electrolyte derangements have been corrected, and certain other medications have been provided. Sympathomimetics such as epinephrine, dopamine, dobutamine, and so on. That brings us to the end of part three of the temporary carding pacing learn shop. Now, I suggest you go to part four to review. And again, if you found this of any benefit and you think it would contribute to the knowledge base of your colleagues, please recommend it. Thanks again.